What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined this morning by Anthony Wittrado. We're going to get into a little Gavin Stone, Bobby Miller conversation. Miller pitching last night, Stone pitching tonight. But before we get into big picture stuff, Anthony, looking at last night's game, we know it wasn't Bobby Miller's finest hour. But when you look through the box score, when you think back on, on what we saw last night, what jumps out to you about Miller's performance last night? I think just him being so erratic still. Um, you know, he really hasn't found it since he's been back. Um, he looks very much like the guy he did just before he left. You know, there were some calls last night that probably uh, get him out of some trouble a little quicker. And he was so erratic, though, that I think he just he, he was not in line to get those sort of borderline pitches or the benefit of the doubt from the home plate umpire. Rightfully so. You know, not a, not a gripe with his balls and strikes there. I think he was just so all over the place and, and definitely didn't have command of anything great. That curveball from time to time looked like he could start to harness it. And then, you know, because nothing else was working, other guys, you know, the hitters were starting to lay off of it. And then it then it lost its effectiveness. So I think in general, um, when you look at, at the short outing last night, it was just a general lack of command, of control. The stuff is still there. You know, the horizontal vertical, you know, that's that still plays for the most part. The velocity is still there. He just, he just, it feels like he doesn't know where it's going. And, yeah. and right now, that's clearly limiting him. Yeah. You look at the whiff numbers. It's funny. I'm just going back into last night's. I mean, he got a 26% whiff rate on swings, but how's this for a number? You mentioned the word erratic. 32% of his pitches last night were in the zone. 32%. Yeah. That's yeah. like, and, and now obviously some guys are swinging at stuff outside of the zone, but. His sinker was in the zone one out of every four times. Fastball, 36% of the time. The slider, which he threw 10 times, was in the zone once. I mean, like that, yeah. like we could just stop the, stop the content right there. He threw 10 sliders, and one of them were in the zone. The curveball was actually the pitch he landed the most. Six out of nine landed in the zone, and then the changeup, two out of eight in the zone. So not pretty stuff from Bobby Miller. I think the word you used, erratic, is perfect. But kind of the bigger picture conversation in light of that, and in light of Gavin Stone, another guy who's uh, the 25-year-old pitcher, same thing as Bobby Miller, is, is kind of this conversation of, are these two guys that are headed in different directions? And I warned you that I had a monologue, but, but stay with me because this is fascinating when I did a deep dive. It's just far as the compare and contrast of these two people, big picture. So both are 25 years old. Both are right-handed pitchers, but that's kind of where the similarities end. Bobby Miller, first-round pick out of Louisville. Gavin Stone cost-saving pick in the fifth round out of a school none of us have ever heard of. Bobby Miller, 100-mile-an-hour fastball, screams, stuff, stuff, stuff. Gavin Stone, 94-mile-an-hour fastball that, that relies mostly on off-speed stuff. Bobby Miller tries to overpower guys. Gavin Stone, limit hard contact. Even their careers have been opposite. So heading into 2023, so two years ago, both guys elite prospects in the top 40 on the athletics prospect rankings. But it was actually Stone who the Dodgers deemed more major league ready. He got the first chance to make an appearance at the major league level, but it went terribly. First three starts, four earned, five earned, seven earned in 10 innings pitch. He had a whip of three, walks and hits per inning pitch of three and just five strikeouts. Eventually he gets more chances. It continues to go poorly. 15 earned runs in 21 innings from that point forward. So Stone, who's more major league ready, they believe in first fails. Bobby Miller though, on the other hand, Ends up making 22 starts, 3.76 ERA. The expected ERA was below that. The FIP was below that. He has a fastball that averaged averaged 99.1 miles an hour. Stuff one out, and then you're like, okay, it's arrived. Bobby Miller, like the Gavin Stone thing, the, the soft contact changeup, not going to work at the major league level. Then 2024 happens. Gavin Stone, we get some reports that, hey, 2023, blister, maybe tweaked some mechanics, got out of line. Maybe there's optimism. I'll say this. I've had a lot of terrible takes. I was all in on Gavin Stone being good. I just want the record to show. You can go back and check the tape. Miller, though. Stone, okay, maybe a bounce back. Bobby Miller contending for Cy Young's all-star game appearances, that kind of thing. But Bobby Miller struggles. Five starts, averaging just four innings per start, a 6.75 ERA, and a walk rate and a home right rate that doubled since last year. His first start of the year, six innings, two hits, no earned, one walk, 11 strikeouts. Awesome. Since then, five earned, two earned, five earned, three earned across just 14 innings, 10 total strikeouts in his last four appearances, 10 total strikeouts with 11 walks, not to mention a home run allowed in all four of those starts. His whip, 2.14. 
In 2023, above average walk rate, barrel rate, exit velocity, all the expected stuff. 2024, excuse me, that was 2023. 2024, among the worst in baseball and all those. Last one here, Gavin Stone, 2024, headed in the other direction. 14 starts, almost six innings per, an ERA of 3.04. If you want to trim it down a little, his last 10 starts, 2.18 ERA, and the metrics back it all up. 81st percentile exit velocity, 80th percentile barrel rate, 87th percentile hard hit rate. He's just staying off of barrels. And so that's a long-winded way of me saying these are two guys that are trying to do the pitching thing in radically different ways. One guy failed last year and is succeeding now. The other guy succeeded last year and is failing now. So big picture, when you evaluate these two players, Anthony, where are you at with both of them? I'm not necessarily asking you to choose yet. I might at the end of this video, but just big picture, where are you at with these two guys? It feels like with Stone, you're looking at a floor. Yeah. And with Miller, you're looking at a ceiling. Okay. Unpack that a little bit. And you're and you're trying to predict which one is going to be more valuable. Um mm -hmm. And and with all of the stuff and the velocity and everything like that that Bobby Miller brings, he's so so appealing. He's yeah. appealing to anybody, um, right. but he, he's really appealing here um, because I think before Glass, now the Dodgers really didn't have that kind of guy in the rotation. Yeah, and so you know he he seemed like to be sort of a missing piece where every other rotation you know had one, two, sometimes three of those kinds of guys, and so we thought Bobby Miller was going to be the next dude. And so far, it just hasn't been. Now, yeah. when I was sort of doing some looking at numbers, too, before we got on here, last night the, against the White Sox was only his fifth start of the season. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. It it seems like. He's 20 made, innings pitch. 20 total yeah. innings pitch for Bobby Miller this year. Yeah. For some reason, it seems like he's made so many more than I was. I was shocked that it was that low. And right. obviously, he'd been hurt and everything like that. But, um, you know. I was ready to go, you know, Gavin Stone seems to be the better fit because of the ceiling now that they have glass now, now that, now that they have Yamamoto and some uncertainty with guys like Bueller and Kershaw and, you know, who knows where Dustin, where Dustin May will fit in later, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you you kind of need a stabilizer a little bit with a high floor. And that seemed to be Stone. It still, it still seems to be Stone. But when I looked at Miller, I was like, well, boy, this, this season is still brand new for him. Yeah. And he was pitching hurt. A little bit prior you know, you know let's call it the last couple starts before he went out um and then he's recovering it still seems like now he's trying to find it and and yeah. that command just isn't there so for me at this point in the season i'm willing to give it a couple of more starts for miller if we can see some promising returns um yeah. you know he doesn't have to be lights out but just has to be trending in that right direction then i sort of like where he's at in this rotation yeah. Um, but again, I still think Stone is sort of that stabilizing piece where you sort of know what you're going to get, at least to this point. I know. And he was bad last season. So this yeah. has to continue to go this way for this to be a, a real thing. But, yeah. you know, if he's the guy who can give you between five and six innings and outing and give up two runs, you know, sometimes three runs or something like that, yeah. keeps you in the ball game every night. That's going to be big for this rotation because. You're looking at at a guy who may slot in name wise, recognition wise, as like yeah. the fourth or fifth starter. And so, um, you know, if, if you can have that with him, you know, that that is very valuable, and it's very valuable going into October as well when you need yeah. that fourth guy. Um, but I think it's still because of the, the only five starts for Bobby Miller. It's still a little soon to say like here's where they're at for the season. Yeah. No, I'm glad you bring up innings because it's fascinating. Stone was really bad last year. In 31 innings. Bobby Miller's really bad this year in 20 innings. Gavin Stone, really good this year, far larger sample size. Bobby Miller, really good last year, far larger sample size. And so with both guys, we have a small sample size of failure and a big sample size of success, which is why I don't think we have to choose sides here and say, yeah. well, no, uh, um, are you can only pick one, you know. But I, I do want to touch on something that you brought up because I've caught myself doing this and when we're talking about ceilings and floors coming into this season, I, I I think I made a similar point in one of our videos where it was like, Hey, Bobby Miller upside is like number one starter and Gavin store Gavin stone, excuse me, is more of a, a high floor guy. Do you think Anthony, are, are we guilty of equating ceiling and velocity 
and floor and off speed stuff. Cause it feels like with yeah. Gavin stone, we say, well, he only shows 94. So he's a high floor guy. And, and Bobby Miller throws 99. So he's a high ceiling guy. Like sure. the reason I ask is cause I look at Gavin stone this year. I'm like, is he could be a high ceiling guy. Like he has a 2.1 ERA over his last 10 starts. He was a top 40 prospect in major league baseball 18 months ago. Like, is it possible that, that Gavin stone is actually has the same ceiling that Bobby Miller does? Cause to be fair on one hand, Bobby Miller hasn't missed much, many bats. So he's got the velocity, but he hasn't been able to translate to the strikeouts. And so I think that's sort of an interesting dynamic where the, the strikeout stuff with Miller that we equate with velocity and ceiling. I, I don't know. What do you make of that? I think that we do equate it with that. I think just in general, um, that's what scouts look for first. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's what all the analysis tells us first. And the reason for that is because you can get away with so much more when you have that stuff, when you have the velocity, when you have the break side to side, up and down, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, for a guy, and look, 94 isn't slow, right? Yeah. He's not throwing slow, slow pitch softballs out there, but in comparison to like, what yeah. you're looking for, you know, it's probably right. three miles an hour down from from where you might want a prospect kind of guy to be. Yeah. Um, the difference is with a guy who relies so much on command and keeping guys off balance, if his command of the zone and and three of his pitches on any given night aren't there, yeah, it can be difficult for him. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's where the ceiling sort of limits itself. Now, that's not to say that's every guy who doesn't throw you know, yeah. 99. It, it's not. There are guys that are front end of the rotation who can live at that at that velocity and and pitch with command and keep guys off off tilt. Um, it's just the 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 margin for mistakes and and the margin for error is much thinner for a guy like Gavin Stone because yeah. he doesn't have the same kind of stuff that Bobby Miller has. So Bobby yeah. Miller can get away with a few more things because his stuff is better and instead of this isn't the case right now in the in his 20 innings or whatever it's been but he can get away with mistake in the middle of the plate because a guy might foul it off yeah whereas stone is a little more likely probably where if he makes that mistake it gets hit into the gap or over the wall or something like that yeah and, and i do think like to answer kind of my own question the thing that rattles in my head when i talk about ceiling with stone is like what can the ceiling be if your entire goal is to limit hard contact you're playing to contact like nobody's expecting gavin stone to be the guy that's 10 Ks per nine, you know, you'd like to see it get in live in an eight to nine ish range. But I think as long as you're doing that, you're sort of playing with fire. It doesn't mean you can't be successful. Plenty of guys have gone out and been elite starting pitchers while doing that, you know, and, and Gavin yeah. Stone's change up and the way that he's been able to manipulate some of his pitches have shown that, Oh, maybe the ceiling is a little bit higher than we expected. But I, I, I sort of land in the same place with you is, the value in Gavin Stone probably begins with how high his floor is because you look at Gavin Stone and to a lesser degree, a guy like Landon Knack and say, these are guys that you kind of know exactly what they're going to be. Like there's not a whole lot of like, well, what if a B and C all hit then what happens? It's kind of like, sure. yeah, he's going to be a guy that has like an average fastball above average off speed stuff, great command and is able to limit hard contact. He's not going to, you know, again, go out and win a Cy Young, but he could definitely be a guy that's in the all-star mix at, at his peak. Whereas with Bobby Miller, you watch the last four or five starts and you say, man, if like, if, if you don't start missing bats and you're not able to locate your pitches, the, the, the floor could be, you know, who knows what the floor, the floor yeah. could be a reliever, you know? And I, I'm not saying that is Bobby Miller. I'm just saying that that type of pitcher can sometimes yeah, get that pigeonholed. Profile, so that archetype, to, to yeah. be clear, to be clear, I believe in Bobby Miller. I just have always kind of said, I believe in Gavin Stone basically just as much as Bobby Miller. I think both of these guys are going to be very, very good for a very long time. So that's kind of where I land. It's just interesting, Anthony, for me to see the two different ways that these guys have arrived where they are today and might arrive at whatever success looks like for them over the next three or four years. Yeah, and I think we look at this with with the window of experience for both guys also because – the guys who succeed quicker typically yeah. are the guys with Bobby Miller's kind of stuff. The Do guys who you can rely on earlier in their career have Bobby Miller's profile. Yeah. Guys who stick and are successful and are very good starting pitchers who rely on sort of just pinpoint control and command and keeping guys off balance, like I said earlier. Yeah. The, the Gavin Stone type of archetype. Those guys tend to be a little more experienced. They tend to be a little older. Uh 
you know, before they sort of figure out here's how I need to pitch at this level. And, and a lot of times they are guys who used to have stuff yeah. who, who have now figured out a different way to pitch. Um, it's, it's not super often you see a guy who's figuring that out at this age and who's successful this quickly, the way, yeah. the way stone has been through, you know, the first few months of the season. And it's interesting just looking, I was just, as you were saying that I was thinking about like Bobby Miller, you project out and you say, is there Tyler glass now in there? Gavin Stone, you could likewise say, is Yamamoto. Like, is there a comp there? Yamamoto's fastball is living in the 95, 96 range. Stone's in the 94, 95. But he's a guy that, like, the number one thing Yamamoto does is command of his pitches. And so could you project out Gavin Stone to becoming the type of guy that the Dodgers thought they were paying for when they got Yamamoto? Could you project Bobby Miller out to becoming the guy that Tyler Glass now has become? Those are sort of the best case scenarios, I think, in many ways. And so, again, this is just an interesting tale of two guys who are both 25 right-handed starting pitchers that have had opposite trajectories of their careers over the first last 18 months. And and both guys, again, to be clear, because I know I'm going to get crushed in the comments, like both guys that we still believe in. I'm not saying Bobby Miller's a relief pitcher. Let me repeat that very clearly. I'm just saying... They have different profiles, different ceilings, different floors, and how they're going to get to whatever definition of success it looks like um, is going to have to be differently. But they're in the right spot. We've seen enough flashes for both of them at the major league level to hope that they can get there. So let us know what you think in the comments below when you think about Bobby Miller and Gavin Stone. Again, we're not saying pick one, but we're just saying what have you made of their careers up until this point? That is Anthony Wittrato. I am Jeff Spiegel. As always, we appreciate you joining us here on Dodger Blue 1958. Click the subscribe, bring the notification bell as well. Share this video with your friends. We would greatly appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. As always, go Dodgers.